Hi everyone, welcome to Nazero Week Sensor Crisis Performance. My name is Erica Wu and I'm very excited to, pre to present my project to you all. For this performance, I would like to invite everyone to bring your mind, body, and soul into this space, relaxing your mind and body and opening up your heart. Don't worry about not understanding the dance because in this piece, dance is for us to feel, not necessarily to understand fully. Please join me on this journey of connecting with the climate crisis on a personal level. Please enjoy. Sense the crisis. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good name. That's it. Sirimanoleti Orphanai <laughs> Or the Living in a UAE, I only saw a part of their story. When I once chatted with a Nepali taxi driver, he told me his story of how he is here to save up for his son and daughter's education, just like the departed husbands from the village. But what I didn't see is that even after 15 years of separation, when they finally saved enough to buy a house closer to the school bus station, the climate crisis caused by the top 1%, intensified rain in the monsoon season, flooding their sacrifice away, drowning their children's future. On top of that, land sellers took advantage of their lower castes and profited from injustice. They are under this capitalist system that exploits people and nature, pitting nature against people and pushing them towards vulnerability, just for a few to profit more from. And they're angry about this system sustained by the greed of a few that undermines their resilience and destroys our harmony with nature. When they poison the earth, suffocating our breath, their greed traps the heat, killing lives, now we're underground. When the sky screams loud, fire burns the ground, I have nowhere to go, there's a war raging in my home. 
And I keep thinking that it's okay Trying to get rid of this pain But do I even have a say Of how they drive our lives Despite the language barrier, I still felt their anger. But what am I supposed to do with it? I guess I can't push it aside since I don't understand the language, but what if I choose to listen? I realized that I, as a reporter, am part of the media that distorted their reality, making the public blame their stupidity instead of listening to their pleas for justice. Not only did I feel their anger, but these media, language, and caste barriers deteriorated their trust in the system and people. I guess that's why they were mad at me before they even knew me. Turns out, this system not only disconnects us from nature, but also from each other, preventing us from seeing each other fully. But what can I do? I'm just a foreigner on the other side, coping with overwhelming climate disaster news like lake and rock drying up, landslides and floods in Brazil killing hundreds of people, and Australian bushfires burning billions of animals and plants. And these make me feel so small. Coming from a place threatened with invasion, I guess I'm used to this feeling. I once asked my parents, "Ba During the pandemic, I even had an existential crisis, asking myself, "What do I live for? How long do I need to suffer? What is the point of it all?" To sense the crisis, it's this powerlessness over uncertainties, desensitization of feelings, not being able to make sense of the life in us, all part of the disconnection within ourselves. The system that puts these emotions against us pushes us towards avoidance. If I, a climate advocate, a girl that loves my country, am drained of hope, what is there to keep me going? What should I do with these emotions? It's not simple to say most days. I don't recognize me with these shoes and this apron that place and its patrons have taken more than I gave them 
It's not easy to know I'm not anything Like I used to be Although it's true I was never attention sweet center I still remember that girl She's imperfect But she tries She is good she lies she is hard on herself she is broken and won't ask for help she is messy but she's kind she is lonely most of the time she is all of this mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie She is gone but she used to be But when it comes to times of collective crisis, what is it that kept people going? I might not be a brave person, but in times of collective crisis, you're either forced to be brave or you're faced with a choice. To avoid, ignore the anger of those at the front lines of the climate crisis, or connect with this anger and harness it into action. I admit it might feel uncomfortable once you accept and share their anger, and yes, it can mean internalizing anxiety about what's happening around the world. But being avoidant is a privilege of our present. It will no longer be a choice in the future, nor is it a choice for some of us now. The sooner we face our fears, the more emotional and climate resilience we build and the more chances we have to secure our only home for my family, my people, and the world I love. We need to come together and lift each other up like the kids supporting each other. We need to voice our anger like the ladies that pass by. We need to work against injustice like Devi who shared her story. We need to widen our imagination, engage in political resistance, take collective action to make things happen, and push for climate ambition in our countries and communities. Only then would we no longer feel small, be able to find joy, and create the hope we need. But what if I get lost again? Well, it's fine to get lost. Each of us alone may not solve the climate crisis, but when we tie our well-being with the well-being of nature, we are taking steps to find our way, embarking on our own creative climate action journeys to collectively carve the path towards climate solution. At the end of the day, it is what broke our ties that is causing the climate crisis. It is how we accept and face our disconnection that will help us reconnect with ourselves, each other, and nature. It is how we enact our reconnection through action. 
that will help us grow and ultimately stop and reverse the climate crisis. Yeah. 